Hey there, entrepreneurs. My name is Sushant and welcome to Trep Talks. This is the show where I interview successful e-commerce entrepreneurs, business executives, and thought leaders, and ask them questions about their business story and also dive deep into some of the strategies and tactics that they have used to start and grow their businesses. And today I'm really excited to welcome Mel Young to the show. Mel is the founder of Flowerdale Valley. Flowerdale Valley creates Australian-made skincare products out of plant-based ingredients, and all of their products are handmade in small batches. And today I'm going to ask Mel a few questions about her entrepreneurial journey and some of the strategies and tactics that she has used to start and grow her business. So Mel, thank you so much for joining me today at, uh, at Trep Talks. And I know you're joining from Australia, so <laughs> thank you for, for joining me today bright and early. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So very interesting business. You've started a skincare uh, products line uh, made out of natural ingredients uh, or plant, plant-based ingredients. So can you share a little bit about your story? You know, what were you doing before you started this business and what really kind of inspired you to start a skincare products business? Sure. So I had a lot of different jobs before I did um, this business, but I always knew I wanted to have my own business. Like I always had that thought in my mind that I would uh, do my own thing one day. And so it was always there. And uh, I was working in kitchens mainly. So cooking jobs uh, were what I did a lot of. And when I had my children, um, I was working at a local place that was doing weddings and functions and things like that. And um, I, they asked me to do some wedding favours for a bride that was getting married there because I was married at the time to a beekeeper and we had local honey. Hmm. So I did that and started a little wedding favour business um, that eventually became the skincare business because uh, I'd always loved skincare. It was always what I spent all my money on and uh, really enjoyed making my own soap and, and lotions and things like that, but had never done it as a business. But doing the wedding favours uh, made me sort of go out and find jars and labels and and things like that and gave me the confidence to take that first step so I continued with wedding favors for a while Hmm. um then where everybody gets a little present on the wedding table so you might do Mm a hundred little tiny jars of something Hmm. and um and it was very fiddly and very time consuming so um after starting in that direction of wedding favors I then decided to stick with skincare and we had a lot of beeswax. So I started with this product, which is bee balm. Hmm. And uh, this is what it looks like. Hmm. And just all natural based around a a skincare recipe. I learned that Cleopatra used on her skin many years ago. Mm-hmm. So that was my first my first product. I started with just one mm. uh, product and then eventually um, started doing other products as well. And right now it seems like you have a wide range of products. I see on your website you have aromatherapy and candles, bee wax bombs, you have clay mask, face oils, moisturizers, and so forth. Uh, so it seems like you've kind of... Um, built on your product line over time. How did you, so are you making all of these products on your own? Are you working with other, um, like a facility that's creating these products? How how are you actually creating these uh, items? Yeah, well, I make them all at home. And so I have a room here that's fully um, made up as a, you know, with industrial benches and things like that. And that's where I make all the products. Um, So the reason I decided to do a business from home is because I wanted to be with my children um, Mm. and I wanted to to be able to be at home because I'm a massive introvert. Mm. So (laughs) those two things were really important to me, um, being at home with the kids. So was was really 
a big um, instrumental thing with me starting a business at home. And it just has worked doing it all from home. Yeah, I think, you know, for a lot of entrepreneurs, it's the freedom, right? So for you, it means yeah. having the freedom to stay at home with your kids. For other entrepreneurs, it's like, you know, they want to have the freedom so they can go out and travel and, you know, do things that right. they like. Um, so I think it, it always comes down to freedom and having, a, you know, control of your own time, which which makes a lot of sense. So, so you have, yeah. Um, so when you started out initially and you had one product and you were doing the wedding favors, um, yeah. how did you kind of, um, um, you know, when you transitioned to like a skincare product company, like did you, where did you start selling it for? Like, were you selling it locally still or at what point did you actually get into an e-commerce business model? So, um, sorry. sorry, can you cut that out? No that way. little bit. <laughs> it's okay. It's not... Um, <laughs> got a child at home today. Okay. Um, <laughs> no worries. That's that that has happened in the past also. So don't worry. Don't worry <laughs> thank about you. That. Yeah. I got completely distracted. Um, so first I started selling the products that I was making at the reception center where I was working. And that was the only place that I sold them. Then I set up an eBay store. And I, I really think eBay or something similar to that is a great way to start your product selling business because you're not paying um, or putting in a lot of time to set up a, a website or spending a lot of money on an online presence. Uh, you're just creating a little business within a business that's already there. So you've got mm. the traffic coming to your to your products, um, which was really great for me. So I started this eBay store and from there I could see that things would actually sell online. Hmm. Uh, so so that was so for a while there I had the local reception center, another local business that wanted to stock my products and an eBay store. And after a little while, um, I had two part-time jobs at that time when I started the business. Gradually, I stopped working there at, at those two jobs and decided to go to markets. So just a local like mm. farmer's market, things like that. And those were pretty small, but I still have customers today who come to my online store who met me at a farmer's market years ago yeah. and tried the product and liked it. So anybody just starting out, I think that a market is a terrific way to to meet new customers that become long-term customers. Hmm. And when you stop doing the market, they'll still come to your online store. Hmm. Um, so that was that was really brilliant. And because those markets were only small, what I thought to myself is I want to get into a great market that has more customers. So I started going to the market in the city here in Melbourne, uh, Victoria, that was like had a lot of foot traffic. This was before COVID. Hmm. Uh, a lot of foot traffic and it was a weekly market in the middle of the city. So going there weekly was a really great way to meet customers as well. And a lot of those beautiful customers are still coming back to my store today. So I'm really grateful for that and think that that was a really great um, way to meet lots of customers. Yeah, no, and I think also that... to see what, Yeah. Sorry, also to see what people like and what they don't like. What... And, and it can be a little bit different, like what people want to buy online compared to what they want to buy at the stall. But 
it was really interesting getting customer feedback right to your face and knowing exactly what people liked and didn't like. I think I think that's uh, you know that's a great example of you know idea validation or product market fit where you basically test out your idea or product in a small way to to make sure that it you know people want to buy yeah. it right like if unless yes. somebody wants to give you their money like you don't know if they're they're willing to buy it um absolutely what yeah. is um and they have to make like a little a little batch of something put the ingredients on it, take it to market, see if people are interested. And, you know, not you don't have to continue with things if nobody's interested in it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, with low risk, mm -hmm. right? So um, the products that you're creating, like, are they, what <laughs> is the competition in the market? Like, are there other products that are similar that are in the market? Or, you know, the products that you're creating are very unique uh, and so that's what is creating the demand or is it really that you know um like for example let's say your bee balm you know you have a bee balm but other people may have their own uh, you know bee balms as well naturally made also and it really comes yep. down to marketing and you know bringing your own or building your own customer base and so forth um so that you know people are buying from you rather than like other sellers Yes, I don't think that a lot of my products aren't particularly unique. Um, you could get them at other places. I think what I offer is like there's a lot of companies, for example, that just sell B product um, skincare. Hmm. So, you know, you could go there and get your honey lip balm and your, your B balm for your face and things like that. But, but, what I offer is, uh, you know, actual moisturizers and serums and a cleansing balm uh, that that people can, you know, add those to the to the order as well. So it makes it a bit uh, more unique. And also, different things sell on different sites. So, for example, on eBay, one product sells really well, and then, um, but it's not the best seller on my website, for example. Mm. So just having multiple products is is a, a great strategy, I think, although you don't want too many products, of course. Mm. But just having those, those uh, different things to different people. Also, mm. you know, I have my products in a few local shops mm. and the thing that sells well in those, the best in those places are the candles usually and mm. maybe the bee bomb. So I have a few different different things to different people. I mean that's that's so interesting. I'm just thinking like why why does one product sell on eBay whereas you know other products sell on your website? Like do you, have you tried to figure that out why why that the reason is? <laughs> I was one of the first people on eBay selling hyaluronic acid, which is a serum. So first of all, I wanted to say before I started this, I had no training at all in how to make skincare, none. Hmm. Basically, I applied my cooking knowledge and what I'd been sort of whipping up at home hmm. uh, to my recipes and just tried them and so and just took a took a took a punt on them mm. to see what would happen so mm. eventually i studied skincare and you know cosmetic manufacturing but that was further down the track uh so i was one of the first people selling hyaluronic serum on ebay mm. and for some reason that's just continued mm. i guess because you know, i have a lot of people that have bought it and left good reviews. Mm. And then, so I was lucky with that. Mm. Um, so that's why that sells really well on eBay, I think. Do, are you on any other marketplaces as well? Is, is Amazon big in uh, Australia? It sure is. It sure is. And, you know, it's just a matter of time that mm. I haven't got on Amazon, to be honest. 
I also tried, I tried Etsy, um, but it wasn't really a good fit for my brand. It never really took off. Hmm. So even though it seems a bit of a funny thing to be selling on eBay, it, it was what I used as a buyer. Hmm. <laughs> so I felt comfortable going on that platform hmm. and just stayed on there. But I'm sure I, if I put time and energy into it, I could go into Amazon. I just, I don't use it as a, as a buyer. Hmm. Isn't that funny? You just don't think. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Amazon, I don't, I, to, to be honest, I don't know the Australian Amazon. I think I know, I mean, I'm in Canada, so I know it's really easy to buy something on Amazon. So I use it quite a bit, <laughs> but it could be different yeah. in Australia. So I don't know. <laughs> I think it's pretty similar, but okay, but maybe um, not as big. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So um, I guess for you, because you're manufacturing your products in your home, it's relatively simple. I mean, you have your recipe, you can create it anytime you want. Um, does it really come down to your, you know, in terms of driving revenue for your business month after month and, you know, maybe even growing it, is, it really comes down to how effectively you can put your products in front of the right kind of customer so that they can uh -huh. see your product and then they can buy it. Um, what have you learned about your customer base? Like who, who's kind of your target market? Mm, mm -hmm. That was something that I really started paying attention to with COVID. So because I was going to market and earning the vast proportion of my uh, income from the market store, and some online sales, but let's say that was supplementary. When COVID happened, I thought to myself, I've got to make this work online now because, you know, I have two children and myself. So I wanted to, you know, really, really make this work. So I thought about, you know, what would my customer want? And that was when I started doing uh, bulk products. So like one liter um, bottles for people that love it and can buy a bigger hmm. bigger bottle. Also um, refill packs so that they were really easy to post because they could just go into an envelope and they were cheaper to post. Hmm. Um, and COVID was when I really thought to myself, you know, okay, uh, I have to reach my customer online. What would she really be looking for? And um, my demographic is women, usually over the age of about 40. We want to take good care of our skin, but we, we feel a bit bamboozled with everything on the market. And we just want some nice, gentle products that we know the ingredients are good for our skin. If I don't, if I wouldn't use it on myself, I don't put it in my products. Hmm. So uh, it's really important to me because my customers, a lot of them know my name and my email address. They know how to contact me on Instagram and things like that. So I really need to be really transparent uh, with them. So that has played a, a really massive role in just the products that I create. And so at that time, I started to think a bit broader about what my customers would be wanting and decided to get better on social media because before that time, I wasn't hardly using it at all. Hmm. And this is something I think is really important for business owners to know is that uh, it's a lot of your business is going to be marketing. Like hmm. the a vast majority of it is going to be marketing. So, and a lot of us, we start businesses because we're good at making skincare or we're good at, you know, maybe customer service or whatever it is that we're selling. We like that and we're good at it. But we, but if you want to have a successful business, you're going to have to spend a lot of time marketing. And that was really a challenge for me. So I did a course that was like, it was a great course and it was about um, 
how to get on camera for your business mm. and be confident on camera. And it was mm. just a group of, group of us. And every day we did a Facebook live and videos and basically just through repetition, you got really fine with being on camera because so many of us are so shy and not maybe not shy, but we're not used to seeing ourselves on camera. You know, we have this self doubt and, and I think it's massively important for your own personal growth as well to just learn how to be on camera and be okay with that. So uh, that time was when I started doing Instagram videos that had me in them sometimes but a lot of the time and they were about customer service so oh you've bought this product here's how you can use it hmm. this is what you can do with it um, or it might be things like recipes that were helpful for your skin or just how to make a face mask at home, things like that. So I really broadened my thought about what my customer might like to see, what might make her laugh, what she might be interested in. And I tried to show up on Instagram and Facebook showing that. And through that, that was how I got a lot of my local um, businesses contacting me and saying, we like to stock your products. We've seen you on Instagram. Uh, so I think that was a really pivotal thing to, to, to do is get really comfortable on camera and be okay with not being perfect on camera. Hmm. Yeah. Are, are you still, are you still doing the Instagram lives or have you stopped? Yeah, I don't do Instagram lives. Um, and I don't, I've never really done lives, but I did videos, so reels. Okay. Okay. Yeah, reels. Um, I still do them. Yeah, I, I sort of took, we just moved house, so I took um, a little bit of time off just recently okay. and let the business just just go without them for a couple of weeks. But, yeah, I think it's a terrific way to reach your customers and to, I mean, a, to stand out. For sure. I mean, a big part of, you know, I guess, skincare that is targeting, you know, as you said, your demographic is, you know, women over 40 years of age and, and so forth. Um, I'm assuming that when, you know, uh, when someone is going out in the market looking for skincare products, like they're trying to achieve some goals with their skin, right? Maybe they have the fear mm -hmm. that, you know, they want to min maintain their, you know, uh, their existing skin tone or something like that, or, you know, they want to, uh, you know, whatever results that uh, someone is trying to achieve, how do you, yeah. um, I mean, I can, I can see you have a very, you know, very nice skin, but like, is that oh, part of, is that part of like, um, <laughs> how do you, how do you convince a person? Because there's so many chemicals, there's so many products out there. How do you convince someone that your product is going to get them the result that they're looking for? Oh, do you promise? Do you make some promises? <laughs> no, I try not to. Um, I, I try not to make promises. Um, I what I what I focus on is really showing the customers what's in the product. So I might have a you know a a, a video where I'm showing everything in the product, everything as it's going into the product as I'm making it make it a bit interesting uh, and I I really like customers to to see that transparency and then to to sort of I think that at that point they'll make up their own mind hmm. what what uh, you know that that would be great for their skin and 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 sometimes I'll I like have an ingredient spot, like so. I'll get uh, shea butter, for example, hmm. and I'll tell tell you why shea butter is really great for your skin and and what it's used for and and things like that. So 
that's sort of been my approach because you do have to be careful about uh, things that you're promising to your customers um, when you haven't actually had your things tested for that. Mm. Okay. And there's quite a lot of regulation around what you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say. Uh, for instance, you can't make claims that your product is good for eczema or uh, rosacea, things like that, certain skin conditions, unless you've had, you know, tests done on your product that show that it's great for that. So, so the way I got around that was just showing customers the ingredients and the process of making and being really open and honest uh, in that in that way yeah so these, so these kind of products they are mostly really what they're doing is helping you hydrate and moisturize like these are essentially it's it's an oil right so you're basically hydrating yeah. and moisturizing absolutely that that's what i say that my products do they they're kind of like the skincare that you would make if you were going to make your own skincare at home so, you know, if you, if you were making your own skincare at home, you wouldn't skimp on the ingredients. You'd want to put really great, great stuff in there for your skin. And you wouldn't use anything like propylene, glycol or whatever that you went, I don't know what that does. You know, you probably wouldn't have access to that. So that's where my range comes in. It's for people that, you know, they want to keep their skin hydrated as they get older um they want to keep their skin soft and smooth perhaps you know often what people do is often with skincare what people do is they've used nothing forever they've mm. never used it never so now they need to come now that they're in their 40s for example they notice that their skin's dry and they need some help so it's really easy to just use a cleanser and a moisturizer at that point. And just those two things, you really just want to make sure that you're being really gentle and hydrating your skin. So there's that type of person. And then there's the other type of person is the person. I mean, of course, there's more than two, but often I find that people have used everything under the sun on their skin and their skin is now dry and red and irritated because they've damaged the skin barrier mm. and the skin barrier is really important to look after and just needs a lot of nourishing and hydrating mm. okay yeah does that so, answer your question it does it does it, it definitely does i mean it, it basically comes down to you know um just paying more attention um hydrating moisturizing um and I guess, you know, just being taking care, better care of your skin, I guess. Um, yeah, absolutely. So you're running your business from your home. Um, when you get yes. orders, e-commerce orders, are you the one kind of packaging it and shipping it out? What is kind of your fulfill, fulfill, fulfillment and shipment or shipping strategy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have everything here that I need for all my parcels. So... When orders come in, I can ship them out usually the same day or next day, and I do it all from home. I've done, I do everything in the business, but I have in the past outsourced things to Fiverr um, mm. and places like that because sometimes I'll need help with a uh, website. Like, for instance, I didn't make my own website. I don't mm. know how to do that. And it would take me far too long. So I outsourced that to Fiverr. So rather than hire anybody um, for an ongoing thing, in a business the size of mine, I just outsource things as I need to to Fiverr or another site similar. Yeah. No, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, your, your website looks great. I think... Uh... You know, it has uh, uh, beautiful images. I think I think your website is, uh, looks very nice for sure. Oh, thank for, you. For somebody who's created, you know, someone from Fiverr who's, if, you know, they have created the site. It yeah. looks great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It does the job. It could be better. Probably needs an update. 
but it's isn't it good to know that you don't have to be perfect um you can still make sales even without the perfect photography you know i've done all those photos myself yeah they're not yeah so i mean that's part of the i guess that's part of your brand like if if your products are handmade and you know you're giving the impression that it's it's kind of like um homemade kind of a uh, you know uh organic business you don't want your photography to be <laughs> very great yeah. as well because that that doesn't go with your you brand might be right. yeah yeah <laughs> um so you're selling mostly in australia or are you selling internationally as well occasionally i get inquiries from overseas and so then i'll just work out the postage and things like that for them and send them a quote and I can send overseas, but I don't have it on my website. It's just a little bit confusing to do that. So, so I'm, I'm within Australia. Okay. Yeah. Um, what does your future vision for your business look like? Um, you know, every entrepreneur, every business person has kind of a goal for their business. Is your goal really just to, um, to continue to um, find more customers to add more products, uh, additional product lines, and really just grow your business organically? Yeah. Um, about a year ago, I realized that, it, that to grow my business, I probably needed to outsource um, some products. And so I decided to partner with a a a skincare manufacturing company that specializes in products that are great for your skin microbiome. So I started, I, I worked with them and they've created two moisturizers for me, which I'm, I'm to get soon. Um, they're coming in soon. So um, the reason I outsourced those two products is because the moisturizers are the most time consuming product for me to make hmm. and i also didn't have the equipment and the the know how to create these products that i wanted to to start selling so i sorry my dog okay <laughs> you can edit yeah yeah no worries it's, it's, it's all good don't worry yeah. <laughs> I put them in the bedroom. There. <clears throat> no worries. I don't. I don't. To be honest, I don't hear. I don't hear it. Like if it's uh, if your dog is barking, oh, I don't hear it. Okay, I'll <laughs> yeah. keep talking then. That's yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. So the the skin microbiome is a bit like the gut microbiome. We have good bacteria um, in our gut, and you know it's really good to eat fermented food like sauerkraut and things like that um for your gut in your microbiome for your for your microbiome in your gut and then your skin actually has that as well um good bacteria on your skin that and when people have skin problems often it's because the balance of the bacteria is out and that can be caused through things like being too rough with your skin or using soap and things like that that are too they're too harsh for your skin, so your face. Um, so I became really interested in the microbiome of the skin and wanted to create these but didn't have the know-how and the facility at home. So I've outsourced those moisturisers and they'll be coming soon. And uh, so, so I'm wanting to move more into that area of of skincare. So, uh, have a whole range that's great for the skin's microbiome. And what it does is, when you apply a product with a, like a postbiotic on postbiotic in it, which is what these will have, it's the bacteria have already fed on the moisturizer, fermented it, and made it a lot better for your skin's natural bacteria. So when you put it on, it's really soothing and hydrating 
And it's just really exciting because a lot of people have a skin barrier problem. You know, they've been too harsh with their skin. Um, now they've got redness, or perhaps acne, you know, things like that. Those can all be helped a lot with microbiome friendly skincare. So, so that's my my vision is to still have some products that I create at home, but mm. also have more products that that um, some products that I don't create that are really great for the skin's microbiome. Mm. So basically, you're creating a brand, and then now you're adding more product lines uh, to your business. Um, yeah. To, to basically and a couple a more... of lines will, will go as well. Like, so, you know, it, it's interesting as well with the business that you can, you can learn and grow and move, you know, put some products aside that no, you can see an improvement for them. You can, you can improve on them and come up with new products. You don't have to be perfect before you start is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, makes makes complete sense. Um, I know you mentioned a little bit around your marketing that you were, you know, making you're making Instagram videos on social media and and so forth. Are you doing um what what other marketing are you doing in terms of uh, really getting new customers and also keeping existing customers? Uh huh. Uh huh. So. I think I could do a lot more, to be honest, but I haven't put time and effort into some of the paid platforms like Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Uh, I haven't, I haven't put the time and energy into learning those enough. Um, so I've occasionally dabbled in them and haven't found them that worthwhile for me. So I think. I really need to to focus on those. What I have focused on really is just doing organic things. So I have a blog on my website and I like to write a blog piece um, probably every couple of weeks. And then what's great about that is that I can put that onto my Instagram and say, you know, here's a little bit of information if you want to read the whole blog. Head here, it takes customers directly to the website. And I I find that having the blog is really great because people go to Google and, you know, if they type in um, anything about hyaluronic acid, for example, a page that comes up quite quickly is my website. So, and that's just from a blog that I wrote actually a few years ago. So it's really great for Google rankings to have a lot of information on your site because often people do go to Google. They do want to know an answer to a question about skincare. And if you make sure that your articles cover that topic, you can really make your rankings go up just organically. So that, that, strategy I learned in a book called uh, They Ask, You Answer, which I'm sorry, I don't remember the, the, I think it was Marcus, somebody that was a really good book. Basically, he uh, had, he sells swimming pools mm. and had written, do you know the book? No, I don't know the book, but I, I can understand the concept, yes. And he he basically wrote down all the information about swimming pools, like heaps and heaps of blog pages yeah. to answer every question. And yeah. so anytime a customer went to search for swimming pools, there he would be right up in the, the top searches. And, yeah. and that gives you credibility with your clients because they, yeah. they, they know that you know what you're talking about. So Exactly, yes. Uh, I mean, the more you kind of share the knowledge <laughs> Uh, you know about the things that people want to know about. You know, and then when they search those questions on Google, and you know your content comes up, it kind of uh, 
establish as you as an authority and then people want to do business with you so it it makes a lot yeah. of sense yes yes so i do i do blogging and then social media and between those two things um that has kept so so i i stopped going to market probably a couple of years ago hmm. because i was finding that i wanted I just wanted to be home with the kids hmm. on those days, selfishly, and um, I could make it work through reaching my customers online rather than having to go out to meet them. But I still think going to market was a great way to meet customers as well, hmm. but I didn't need to keep doing it forever. And I, then... I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's great. Like if you've found, um, you know, your um i guess your your happy place where you have enough customers you know where you know you have enough revenue coming in you don't have to go out you can focus more time online so, so i guess that mm. that brings me to my next question like how much time do you spend every day kind of working on your business or you know doing marketing and also fulfillment and all the things like how much time do you spend every day on your business yeah. Well, I've been running the business now for about seven years. So from the very start, so it would have been about seven years. And um, these days, what's great about it is that you can, I can spend days on it and then I can spend days away from it just doing the fulfillment. Hmm. Perhaps just doing a post, a social media post and fulfillment of orders uh so that that's great that's the freedom that that we all start the business wanting most of the time when my children are, are at school I'm focusing on flower Dale valley so I don't do the housework you know I don't I walk the dogs then I come home and I I'll probably spend probably six hours a day just doing all the marketing, the fulfillment, making of the products, uh, researching anything I need to research, blogging, label designing, you know, all that, whatever just needs to be done. I I do that when my children aren't here at school time. I, I think and on school, yeah. on school holidays, it's really kind of challenging. <laughs> <laughs> But it all gets done. That's the that's the beauty of it is that once you've set it up, you know you can be you can be doing whatever you want to do, and orders can just come in. So if you set it up a few years ago, you know. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's really great. I think you know it's. Uh, I mean, in a way, you can call it passive income, right? Even though you have to spend. It's like you have to spend time to get it going, but now you have more sure. freedom uh, that you don't have to worry every day and spend like 20 hours every day kind of uh, building it no, up. No, no. At first it was a lot of work. It, you know, I'd often find myself overwhelmed with everything that needed to be done. But a few years on, it it's um, it's a lot more relaxed. But you still have to be self-motivated and get, made what you want to make like I don't think my customers would thank me if it took me a week to ship out their products for example yeah. I think customer service is really important so I always make sure I've got the products made and that when a customer is kind enough to place an order with me I want to make sure that I fulfill that quickly and and I also um, I think one thing that I started doing a long time ago which is contrary to everything that a lot of businesses do, I've done it, it's worked for me, um, is that I decided that I wanted to offer a special offer every month. Mm. So customers order a certain amount, usually it's $100 or $99, and then they get a free product put in there. Every month it changes and... They don't need to put a code in or anything. It's just automatically included. That's because I like to be generous and I mm. just like to look after my customers. And it's a great way for them to try things that they may not have tried yet. 
And so it's always nice to get a little bit of something extra. So I always make sure I do that. Yeah. No, I think that's a great strategy. I think uh, um, doing promotions is, is a great way to drive business for sure. Um, yeah. In every entrepreneur's journey, there's always <laughs> mistakes made, lessons learned, failures. Um, what has been, you know, you've been running your business for seven years. What have been uh, a big mistake that you kind of, you know, thought that maybe you could have done without that? <laughs> what was the lesson huh. that you learned and what can other entrepreneur um, ent entrepreneurs learn from your mistakes? Mm. I think one of the first things that I would do differently is when I first started my business, I would buy things in bulk to get the savings and then realize that I had a whole lot of stuff that I didn't need. Hmm. So, for example, when I first started, I went to a gift shop and bought a whole lot of um, baskets and bags that were, like, reusable and um, for my customers so that I could put the products in. And when I went to market, they didn't sell that well. They were really slow sellers. And I thought that they would be really fast. So they, they were like, um, you know, little Hessian bags and I'd put a couple of products in them and I thought they looked really pretty. But they were never that popular and I've still got some of them. <laughs> and I think what I would do differently is just buy a few. Even if you just buy 10, try them out at the market, then then you could always go back and buy more. But it's hard to move stock that you have. Um, and also it ties up your cash flow. So you don't have that money for something else, which is really important at the start because everything just costs money and you're just outlaying a lot of money and you're not actually getting in the, the orders as yet. So there, there were quite a few things like that that I spent on that I really wish I hadn't. Hmm. And the other thing is uh, from time to time I've had a contractor, you know, let's say I needed some help with marketing or, or um, one time I got some skincare products tested, they failed the test. And uh, it was just a lot of money down the drain and also hiring contractors from time to time. It's your job, I think, to find out beforehand what they're going to offer you and get it really, really clear. Because if you don't have it clear what they're going to offer you, like really set down that every Tuesday I'm going to spend three hours doing this, if you haven't asked them those questions, I think in my case that has just led to a lot of disappointment because I've hired people, I've been disappointed. Perhaps we had dis different ideas of what it was going to, um, what was going to be involved. Hmm. So I think before I started this, I had no business experience whatsoever. And these are just the things you learn. You, I don't think anybody's like contrary to what we're told, you know, I'm sure some people are much better at business than others, but I think there's not such thing as a born entrepreneur or whatever. You just learn as you go and you just got to keep going and keep going. You've got to want it more than anybody else. Mm. <laughs> and sure. you become a business person over time. I was not a business person before I, <laughs> before I began. And I think getting those nuts and bolts sorted with anybody you're working with really clearly is a really good idea. No, I think I think those yeah. are those are great uh, those are great uh, business lessons for sure. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to um, uh, do the rapid fire segment. In this segment, I'm going to ask you a few quick questions and you have to answer them maybe in a word or a sentence or so. So the sure. first question is one book recommendation for entrepreneurs and why? I know you gave one recommendation already, but... <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, I would definitely say the E-Myth because 
it teaches you that you have to become a business person and uh, you can't just start a business because you like making skincare. That's going to be a small part of it and yeah. the rest of it will be learning how to run a business and that's yeah. very important. Yeah, uh, email, email, yeah, email is a great book. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. An innovative product or idea in the current e-commerce, retail, or tech landscape that you feel excited about? Innovative a retail product. Well, innovative Innovation. product or idea. It could be anything. Like, hmm. Well, I guess I'm excited about, and they're not that new, but I love the new vacuum cleaners, the Dyson, uh, with the... You know, it's just revolutionized vacuuming. You don't have to, you know, wander around the whole house with with a cord anymore. You've just got this battery operated, really easy to use product. And uh I love mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just just love how they've just taken something that we all used to do and made it completely different but a lot more user-friendly, like they were often, they must have been thinking about what the customer wanted, what the customer needed. You know, we want to be able to vacuum up a mess really fast. Yeah. And Yeah, and quickly. So love that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, a business or productivity tool or software that you would recommend or a productivity tip? Productivity tip. Yeah. My biggest productivity tip would be to... Uh, do your books every single month on like within a few days of that month ending because it's so much harder to go back and find stuff when time has passed so I always recommend that once you know you're only a few months a few days into the next month you should really have written down all your income expenses whatever software you use and have that all sorted so you know you can just put that out of your mind i i think that's a great great advice for sure uh another startup or business uh in e-commerce retail or tech that you think is currently doing great things Gosh. another startup or business uh, any products uh, that you you like or any business this that you look up to? How much, show hmm? much, shows how much time I'm spending online. Uh, <laughs> if not, we can move to uh, the next next question. We can come back to it. Yeah, sure. I, I guess I'm kind of interested at the moment in watching what Tim Ferriss is doing. You know, he did that four-hour work week. Yes. And he kind of, he kind of, really looks at the world differently and strategizes how things work hmm. and makes everything a process i really like that it not ha it's not how i think but it, hmm. it's really i think really beneficial so i would say that awesome awesome yeah he focuses a lot on um on experimentation and and data gathering and then looking at how you know what what is actually working and what's not so yeah it's really interesting um final question what business advice what is the best business advice that you have ever received or you would give to other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, two things, two things. I I think that if you have the dream to be an entrepreneur, not everybody has that. Like it's not, not everybody has that. So if you have that, I think that that's a sign that it's for you hmm. and you've got to give it a go because if you don't, you always feel that, that thought. I know that it was always in my mind. So if that's there in your mind, you should definitely give it a go. And the other thing I would say is keep going. So if you try something and it's not quite right, not quite working, you know, you just need to give it a little tweak, a little bit more time. 
it takes time. It takes a lot of time sometimes to just uh, find your customers. And so you have to believe in what you're doing, which is really challenging. And I think most entrepreneurs, if they're honest, they would they would say that in the start at the start, they had a lot of people around them saying, you know, what are you thinking? What yeah. are you doing? You're not earning any money, and that's a challenge, but hmm. um, there is an end goal to that if you keep going. For sure, for sure. And you're, you, I think you're very correct. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, and I don't think everybody should be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I think no. it's, uh, <laughs> it is. It is um, um, I think some people like, to have their freedom. And I think uh, those are, and, and you know, uh, it, it definitely requires, as you said, you know, um, taking risk and then keep on going because you don't, yes. you don't always get success right away. So um, no. you can be dissuaded by other people kind of saying, hey, what are you doing or why it's not working? Why, why don't you just uh, do something else? So it does require a specific kind of a person to be an entrepreneur for sure. So Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Self-motivated for sure. Because, you, yeah. you know, you have to get up on a Tuesday and do what you need to do <laughs> without anybody there telling you what to do. So, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Well, Mel, those were all the questions that I had. Thank you so much for sharing your story, for sharing your successes and uh, failures and also, you know, some of the business lessons le learned. Um, if somebody wants to purchase your products, uh, what is the best way to do that? Sure. Well, they can head to www.flowerdalevalley.com.au and you can also contact me there. So, Awesome. Well, Mel, amazing. yeah, thank you. Thank you so much again uh, for for sharing your time, for sharing your story and uh, business lessons learned. Uh, thank you again. And I wish you all the very best. And thanks for joining me today at Trip Talks. Thank you. Thank you, Sushant. It's been an honor.